Welcome to the Average Nobody's Podcast number, I guess we'll call this one, it's 86. We're just going to go with 86, even though it's kind of like a half episode. Um, This is a breaking news podcast. Adam? We did it. What we did it, we did it. That's all I can say. We fucking did it, man. This is it. I mean, what a fucking day, as you can tell by the title of this podcast. So Zack Snyder this morning, Wednesday the it says the nineteenth, twentieth. He did a live watch along of Man of Steel. That was awesome. Like, which was yes. That, that's what the majority of this episode is. This little mini episode is going to be uh, be about. But uh, he did the live stream of that watch along. And then right after, he announced what we thought he was going to announce for years now. He was he was being a real coy son of a bitch about it with us. <laughs> he he really was. He was being so coy. I love when he does, and we'll get into that. I, we'll get into that. But that's it. The Snyder Cut's happening. HBO Max, it's coming 2021. Um, it's rumored, and I don't know. I, I read this in a bunch of different places, but I don't know where the source came from. And I don't know if your boy Umberto said anything about it, but the budget for this the reshoot remake is going to be 20 to 30 million dollars. Yeah, that's nothing to sneeze about. That's a decent Definitely amount. Not. That is a very good amount of money, especially for a movie where Zack Snyder's been saying all along and he kept to his same, you know, his guns the whole time. He has all of this footage ready to go. The CGI needs to be finished. There's a few, I think, probably ADR stuff that needs to be done. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few spots where they have to bring in people to actually do reshoots. For certain scenes, um, but you know that's not bad. Thirty million dollars is a lot to get to get this done. Um, so anyway, let's start from the top. Man of Steel, uh, watch along. Right, I haven't seen this um, movie in a long time, and I I loved. I saw this in theaters, and I loved it. And uh, it's I just think it's a a tremendous movie. Um, and this was really the. I haven't really watched many movies like with director commentary. I know that's a. A thing on you know special DVDs and whatnot, but I, I haven't really done it, and I had to do some fancy footwork too because I was watching it on a recorded version for YouTube TV, so I kept having to pause Zach and uh, you know skip through commercials and then like sync back up. So it was a real pain in the ass, but I, I got through it. I did it, and uh, like at one point towards the end, I was like right on the money where he was. Like towards the end, he he synced up like right before the final battle, and boom, I was there. So that was pretty good. But what his little, like, his, how he talked throughout the movie and all the little nuances and, and how he, how he, you know, got to a finished product and, you know, small things like you wouldn't even think about, like how, how much thought went into, you know, how does the world en- engine protect itself? You know what I mean? That's, that's something like I, the casual viewer takes for, takes for granted, but it's something yeah. that he and his team have to think about. So to see yeah, yeah, to yeah. see you know small pieces like that um uh, you know him bring attention to them I thought was really cool um we'll get into some of the details here first of all I was I was watching a little differently than you I was at work today and I was I've been cleaning out this you know cleaning out this area of our one of our warehouse houses and I've been working by myself and usually I have podcasts on. I'll throw it on a Bluetooth speaker. I don't really have. There's no good internet there, so there was no way for me to watch the movie. I mean, first of all, I couldn't watch the movie and operate the forklift at the same time. Not but, safe. You know, not safe at all. OSHA would be all over me. But especially, there's no good internet there to be watching a movie and listening to his live stream from Vero, or technically Zoom, but Vero. Right. So I was just listening to his Zoom and trying to best remember the movie, like the movie as best I could while he was talking about it. But he did a good job of kind of explaining what was going on. And even in certain scenes where he was like, I would hear him be like, and here's what that sketch looked like. He had his little sketchbook, which yeah. I thought was fucking really cool. He's a very good artist. Like, those are rough sketches, but they all are like, I like how there was a lot of sketches in there that the final product were like, it was either very close or very different, and they changed throughout. So I thought that was cool. So I saw a little bit of that, but I was lis- mainly just listening to it. Yeah, I um, really enjoyed when he pulled this, the sketchbook out, too, and he showed you, like, you know, what, what he was thinking and what he drew. I thought that was that was awesome. And the cool thing about that is, like, he's the only one that, that has those too. Yes. Yes. Nobody else yep. sees those. So that was special for the fans to get to see, you know, that part of his thought process. If you get anything from watching his watch alongs and like the way he does these, 
take away from it that he truly cares about the work that he's doing. Absolutely. There's right. There's no doubt about it that he absolutely cares about the movie and cares about what quality he cares about the source material. He he just genuinely cares about what he's doing. And I'm not. This is not me like sticking it to other directors that necessarily don't care. I'm just saying that you watch Zack Snyder, he like handles this. This is his baby. Like mm -hmm. him and Harry Cavill. This is like the start of all of it. There was you know, a, this is the start of all of his his you know his his wild imagination with the Justice League. There's a part at the beginning of the movie where he he talks about um, Jor El is is headed back to the Citadel where his wife is to to send Cal, uh, you know, out, off to Earth. And there's a part he mentions like how the the Citadel is shaped like a a phallus, like a penis, and it's on purpose. Like he he says mm -hmm. he says it's very much on purpose. And I'm like, why? Why the hell is it on purpose? Because he's, and then he explains, you know, to represent this is this is Krypton's first natural birth in, you know, a very long time, and so that represents like a fertility, and he he goes into it and it, the way he explains it, like, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, I thought that was really cool, and actually that's where I want to pop off with my first little. I took some notes, so my first little Easter egg, which I thought was really cool. So I'm not the biggest. Uh, Superman comic guy, more of a Batman man myself. <clears throat> but there's a part, uh, so it's during Zod's revolution. <clears throat> Excuse me, during Zod's revolution, and uh, it's that same scene where Jor El is is you know escaping uh, back to the Citadel where his wife is, and you see a broken moon in the background, and he explains that that's a reference to Doomsday because in a Doomsday mm. comic, Doomsday breaks a moon or the moon, something like that. I was like, oh, that's really cool. I, I, I would have never known that. Because, you know, like, you know as well as I do how many iterations of Superman, how, like, iterations of these characters there are. It's, it's I wouldn't say impossible, but very difficult to have read all of them. Yeah, so. definitely, yeah. There's so many iterations of it. I thought that was very cool, and I thought it was cool that he, like, right from the very beginning, he had his ideas for what you know, his his DC movies were going to turn out to be. He knew he wanted to include Doomsday. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that kind of... Like, I thought that was very cool, and he had this very well planned out and his vision for it. Um, um, I, I that was cool. I also thought, like, he even went so deep into, you know, trying to make this as real as possible. So they, they developed a Kryptonian alphabet for this movie, yeah. and that's what's, you know, carved on all of their buildings and rooms and ships and stuff. And they even thought about creating a Kryptonian language. And so all the actors during the Krypton scenes would have to speak this language and they they used subtitles. So the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes of the movies would have had subtitles. But then they ultimately decided, no, we're not going to do that. Like, let's, you know, speak in English. And so everyone, like, it, it keeps you more, it, it kept everyone more grounded and to understand them. You know what I mean? To really yeah. get their emotions across with... Uh, you know what they what they were saying. So I thought that was cool that, that they thought about it. Like that's how deep he was into yeah. this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I thought that was very cool. Um, I thought it was, and I, I might be getting ahead of myself right now. I'm gonna jump around because my notes are kind of very out of order. But I thought it was very cool when he was talking about Henry. When Hen so you know, spoiler alert, Henry Cavill jumps on at the end. Yep, the very end. And they talk. They basically go through the movie and talk about like Henry's experience with it all, but. To back to the first moment he put on the Superman suit, mm -hmm. and I didn't know this, but he put on the Christopher Reeve suit. Yeah, to to do it to do like the test shots of it. I thought that was fascinating because it's a very different suit. And they were talking about how like it has the underwear over the pants, mm -hmm. like the, that whole look and everything. It's very very different from what they end up you know from what they use in Man of Steel. The man he was saying the Man of Steel costume is more like this three dimensional prop. Whereas the Christopher Reeve outfit is like a sock, like it's you take clothes, it off, yeah, and it has no form. It's like a, it's one of one of those cheap Halloween costumes. Yes. Like it just lays flat. Yeah, it's, it's so that was cool. That that was very very cool. But I did like that. He does talk about how he puts a lot of Easter eggs in his movie that don't necessarily have to do with like Superman comics or like the you know those DC comics in general. He also pays tribute to his other movies. Yeah. Did you catch the uh, the Watchmen one? I thought that was fucking cool. No, I, missed, I totally missed that. I missed it. I missed that part. I was that was when I was trying to like sync up again. I was pissed. So in 
Watchmen. I'm glad you, I'm glad you caught that for me. Yeah, so in Watchmen, there's a scene where they're looking for Dr. Manhattan, and one of the scientists discovers that he's on Mars. And they have these imaging com- uh, imaging cameras with these computers that show a picture of Mars, and you can see a blue dot, and it's Dr. Manhattan. That actor who plays the scientist is also... <clears throat> also in Man of Steel, and he's also a scientist, and he's sitting in front of a computer, and on the computer screen is a picture of Mars. Oh, I thought that was really cool. that is cool. That's, he, I, I didn't, I, I didn't notice it, but I did know that that actor, and for some reason, I don't know why, that actor is the same actor that is in Watchmen. I didn't catch the mm-hmm. Mars thing. I just knew that he was the same actor, because I just recently rewatched. Well, I haven't rewatched Man of Steel in a while, but I watched rewatch Watchmen after I watched the series on HBO. Uh, I want to hop back to the um, like the. I, I know you'll appreciate this, so I, I didn't know this, and uh, I'm sure not many people do that. Uh, Weta Workshop designed the Kryptonian guns, so I thought that was very really cool. cool. And yep. I, in this movie, I always liked the suits that uh, the Kryptonians wear. I think they're so badass. Even like when they get to Earth. Uh, Namek is the name, the big dude that that yeah. uh, that he that Superman and fights Namek and Feora. The mat, like the the face shield that he's wearing is like sinister. I think it's so cool. Yeah. But I didn't. I mean, obviously those parts of the movies are CG. But even when they're walking around, I didn't know that the suits are CGI. And Zack said because they like if those were real, he couldn't move in them. There's no way that yeah, they can right. move in this. You can fight in them, and that makes sense. Especially yeah. for like the showdown with Zod and, and Jor-El. Like, there's no way that they'd be able to fight. So I think that's so cool that they... And you know, this this happens in comic book movies all the time now, that where they, they go in afterwards, and then they, you know, put the suits over everybody. Like, yeah. in... Iron Man. Uh, uh, Endgame. Like, those white suits, those are all CGI that they wear. They yeah. Travel, I had yep. no idea. Um... They do. There's certain things you can do in CGI, and when I was listening to this, I was very surprised at certain things, especially the suits. Like it makes total sense. They they can make that look really good, where you wouldn't notice that that's not a physical prop. Mm-hmm. Because it's so, it's it's stuck to the body, right? It's just like yeah. it doesn't have to have any other action that that the body isn't having. And also, a lot of times, there was Zack Snyder was saying that for some of the fight sequences, they wouldn't be wearing the suits, but they would be they would wear chess pieces. They were the same size as what the suits were. So that way, if they were up against each other, like their bodies wouldn't pass into where the suits were going to be. Because oh, the arms, you can always you can always make the arms look like they're not touching each other. But with the bot with a suit, if they're up against each other, like if they're holding like a fight pose or something, they uh, they would wear those suits. They were the same size. Iron Man, when Tony Stark, uh, fuck, I said every other name but his real name, Robert Downey Jr. When he's playing Iron Man. Uh, they do the same thing. They put the gauntlets on him, and they put a chess piece on him. Right. And the helmet is off, even though you know he would be with a helmet on. And then they build everything out around him. It's a very clever way to do the CGI, where you can mix the real and fake, and and also use real props to assist the CGI. Yeah. So back, getting back into like the actual movie itself, something I love about it is that the first, so between. The scenes in Krypton and the scenes where you know he's a he's a full blown adult now yeah. are those scenes where him he's a child he's a teenager you know he's an adult and it goes back and forth through time I I love that part of the movie because it's like a fast mm. it, you get you get his journey through a, a long period of time very fast and it mm-hmm. it like it shows pieces of his history that are really important to you know what what he becomes. And this, again, this coy motherfucker, he, the part where, like, he really shows out, he's on the fishing boat, that oil rig's going down, he bails, and, you know, he, he saves the guys on the oil rig, and crashes into the ocean, and then he wakes up, like, among whales, and he goes, you know, I don't know if Aquaman saves him, or, or what happens there, it's something along (laughs) those lines, like, you son of a bitch! A lot of it is, like, he wants you to he wants to leave it up to your imagination but mm-hmm. also he already has in his mind what happens and he's trying to be like that no no like yeah aquaman let me hold your hand That's, a little bit yeah right right he's he's like imagine what you want but imagine if aquaman came along and saved him <laughs> right <laughs> and then this is this is cool too it's it's uh the scene where uh you know he's sort of a you know 
I'd say like 12, 13 years old, maybe early high school. Um, the bus scene where the bus crashes off the mm. bridge and, uh, you know, he saves everyone. He also said that, like, they filmed that scene and saw, like, a huge manor nearby. And that's the yep. building that they ended up using is Wayne Manor. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. So very, he was, very, like, very cool. scouting ahead, like, what was that? Well, how, how three years in advance, 2016 yeah, three years. came yep. out? Yep. So that was really Crazy. cool. He had, he had that um, in mind. When, uh, fast forwarding a little bit, after, um, when they find the Kryptonian ship, the one that uh, that Lois Lane goes to, right? Yep, is it like the, the scout ship up in yes, the ice? Yes, the scout ship. The one that had been in the ice for thousands of years. Scott Snyder does this again, <laughs> being fucking coy as fuck. He's, I'm, in the, I'm in the drive-thru getting lunch, and I hear this. And he's talking, he's like, you know, he's like, if you look, he's like, there's all these pods where all the people died, you know, there. Like, they died there. They never escaped from the pods. But you have this one pod that's opened, mm-hmm. you know, and he's like, you know, and that person could have survived. He goes, I don't know. Stay tuned. He says, stay tuned. I want to know what the fuck he means by stay tuned because oh. he didn't re- he didn't revisit it. No. Although he someone who asked a question at the end asked about like the suits specifically. Yeah. And he mentions that, you know, uh, you know, you can think about it, the suits being, you know, his family S uh, yes. house L in you know in two ways you can think about it the way as you know it was his family that was his family ship and they crashed there in the ice and that's why those ships are there uh, and that was like the way he was like leaning you towards he was like laying heavy emphasis on that because i think at one point jor-el does mention that you know that that they were explorers uh, yes yep and then he also mentions like you know maybe that he 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 had the the key the s key mm-hmm when he loaded that into the ship, that, like, not only loaded Jor-El's consciousness, but, hmm. you know, his family stuff into the ship and, like, created those suits for them. But the way he yeah. says it is, you know, leads you more towards it's his, it's a family ship. Right. And so now there's, like, there could be a Kryptonian still wandering around Earth. Yep. And he even says great. that he'd love to That's see a, cool. a Supergirl movie. Or he doesn't have a script or yeah. anything, but he says it would be great, a great, you know, a great thing um so let's see here what else do i have in my notes oh the uh another part where they're you know going back and forth through um you know what made him the man that he is there he's where is he up in alaska or something or pacific northwest yeah. maybe and uh the trucker is harassing the waitress at the restaurant he's working at and you know he steps to henry cavill and henry is like uh, sorry soups and he's like, you know, just trying to keep it down and and not, you know, show how strong he is and just takes this guy's shit. And then he goes outside and the trucker goes outside and his truck is destroyed. There's telephone poles and logs through it. And Zack yeah. Snyder said that they actually built that. And That's that, cool. That wasn't CG. I thought that was really cool. Did you see how, what his idea was at first in the sketchbook? What it was supposed to be? Uh, it was tough so to the- see. I was, so I was watching it on my phone. And I like I couldn't really see it too well. So he he read the original sketch because they did build that, and I thought that was fascinating. The actual truck be mangled by logs, but the original one was it was supposed to be a little less violent. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they put uh, like a shipping container up on its side, like the, I think the thing the truck was pulling probably, right? And then just rested the truck on the top. They were just gonna like rest it on top, so it, like wasn't destroyed. But he got his point across. Um, so he goes right into that, and I thought that was an interesting point because at this point, I guess you know he's kind of fucked up, and, you know, Soups is kind of fucked up, and whatever. But then he makes an excellent point, and then the next scene, and you see, you see, uh, you see Clark hitchhiking on the road, and it's like, why would why would Superman need to hitchhike? And I never that never hit me. It's like, why would he need to hitchhike? And like at that point in time, he had nowhere to he had nowhere to be. Mm-hmm. He didn't he didn't want to be anywhere. He didn't need to be anywhere. Well, he probably needed to be somewhere, but he didn't want to be anywhere. And so he's like, "Well, I don't have to, you know, why waste my? I don't have to be anywhere fast. So I'm just gonna hitchhike." Right. Like he doesn't have to hitchhike. He's Superman. He can just run there, fly there, do whatever the fuck he wants. Yep. That was cool. Thought that was. But that was really cool. That was something that I would have never caught on my own. It's like, yeah, that doesn't—it doesn't feel out of place, but you, you think about it, and it does totally. 
So shortly after the the scout ship, Superman, uh, he's happy that he finds his roots and he heads back home and he sees uh, Martha Kent, which was which was really nice. And speaking of the Kents too, like how good were uh, the the what is her name? Diane Lane. Diane Lane and Kevin Costner as his parents, like it's so both great. sets of parents were were perfectly yeah. cast. And like Kevin yes. Costner as as the human father was so so good in that movie. Um, yeah. but I thought this was another, like, interesting piece that, that they actually built the Kent house and it yep. stood for three years. It was a complete That's house crazy. and it stood for three years and they just had somebody like, they had a guard posted out there for it. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's crazy. It could have been us. They, and they also, um, they also made the cemetery. Yep. Like the, the walk from the Kent house to the cemetery where they, spoiler alert, they bury Superman. Dead bodies and all. It, uh, Kent <laughs> is actually a walk f- like they did that walk from the house to the cemetery there's no cutaways like it's just it's that it's just that close where they did the walk from the house to the cemetery and that's just like how they filmed it thought that was pretty cool um let's see what else can we talk about here uh so I might be I might be skipping ahead a little bit here I know I know we didn't want to sorry skip around I, I know we wanted to keep keep this short um but like I'm, I'm getting to like the final sequence here like basically it all like it goes it starts going nuts when right after um you know th- they drop the s-bomb they call him superman so superman and the you know the air force guys and lois lane they meet up at the base and they've got their plan together right and then from there on like it's just non-stop you know action yeah. your your heart's in your throat the rest of the movie there and um so that's like a I love that whole part. For me, that part, like, I could go... What I, Sometimes what I do is I put on Batman vs. Superman and just starting off at the final fight. Like, and I do yeah. that with this movie, too, starting off right there. You know what I mean? I just want to yeah. see the... I want to see the meat. I want to see the meat of the movie. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a fan favorite character in this movie was Feora, who's uh, Zod's mm-hmm. number two, who, again, coy, coy as hell, like... What happened to her? She get you know she survived the Phantom Zone once. Could she? she you think she could survive it again? Like she doesn't die. She gets sucked back in there. Could we see her again? I I don't know. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. So that was cool. I hate it mostly it was, because it's, it's cool because he like confirms a lot of people's suspicion. Not doesn't confirm them, but like he plays to a lot of people's suspicions about his movies. Yeah, I mean it's it's. It sucks because there's there's two sides of that coin. It's like sure, like he's giving like that's awesome news, but it also could just be like he had planned for her to come back in then the third Superman movie, which we'll probably never see. Right. Maybe, but we'll probably never see it. Or maybe she comes back somehow and like she shows up in Justice League or something. I don't know. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Who knows? But yeah. most likely that third Superman movie, which I would have fucking loved to see. <laughs> oh it's a God. shame. I- an underrated character in this movie, which is going to sound weird because he's a main character, but General Zod, Michael Shannon, oh. tremendous character. I can't wait to rewatch this movie because I know we, we we told Ryan we're going to watch it for, you know, and technically you already watched it. I got to watch it. Um, but he's so good as General Zod. As, as far Just as like, tremendous. as far as comic book movie villains go, like the number one is Heath Ledger and end, end of story. But yeah, yep. like, at the top of the list, I can't. Can you t- tell me somebody who you think like? Obviously, well, Thanos is amazing, and every- definitely in DC, it's 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 obviously it's General Zod. I mean, who else do you put up in DC like for a villain? Right, like, for, Wonder for, Woman's villain fell flat. Yeah, who, you know, who do you do? Steppenwolf. He's hands no. down the number one DC DC EU villain, hands down. But like when you extend yeah. him to Marvel, like. Uh, I mean, in, in Marvel, you have and see if you agree. Thanos is a great villain. I know you love Red Skull. I, I fucking do love, love Red I do Skull. Love me some Red, Red Skull. Skull was a great villain. You know, Winter Soldier to an extent was a great villain. Yep. In, in Marvel, the Vulture. Vulture was awesome. Vulture was awesome. So the what makes so to me and to a lot of people what makes a good villain is like the, on a certain level, like they have to be right. You know what I mean? What they're what they're mm. doing. Even though it's bad, has to be right. And like, yep. what General Zod is doing to him is the absolute. He is he is the hero of his story, and it's yes. that is so easy to see because he is a Kryptonian. 
he he was born to protect Krypton, to keep its species alive, and that's exactly what he's trying to do. Yeah. With everything in his being, like, it's probably killing him inside that he has to do this to another one of his own. Yeah. But he has yep. to do it, so he's doing yes. it. He's following the mission statement. Exactly. That's all he's doing. That's it. I thought that was great. And then at the end, they're like, this is, you know, something that you might not put your finger on, and, and Zack sort of highlights it. And when, at the end of the movie, when... Uh, Superman kills General Zod, breaks his neck. It's more than Superman having to kill. You know what I mean? It's more than that. Mm -hmm. It's about Superman, he does this, and he's alone. That's it. There's no more Kryptonians. He's the last one. And so that's that's something that you have to think about too, that that emotion at the end of the movie after he kills Zod and looks down at his body and lets out that visceral Mm. scream. It's it's more than just he killed somebody. It's like... He, he killed his race. You know what I mean? He's the last it, one. A big theme in this movie, and Zack Snyder touched upon it, was, is sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Everything, is, everything is sacrifice. Jor-El sacrificed for his son. You know, uh, the Kents, you know, Kevin Costner sacrificed for, for Cal. Cal sacrifices his, you know, being to help. You know, he he adopts the Earth to help save them. Right. You know what I mean? Like that. But in that action to kill Zod, he just makes that decision, and that's a huge sacrifice for him. Yeah. Oh, monstrous sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. Um. And uh, you might think this is pretty cool. So that that staircase in the train station where he he kills Zod, I guess it's the same staircase that they use in the Untouchables. I, in a oh, scene that's cool. Kevin Costner, yeah. De Niro, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I didn't know. That's that. a great, and that's an iconic scene from that movie. Yeah, that staircase. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that, um, and I missed that. I missed that in the stream. So I, I, that's all I've got for 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 my yeah, notes. Yeah, I mean, but all in all, it was a great watch. Great, you know, hearing him be so passionate about his movie and how he goes into depth. And there were times where he he gets so carried away with talking about like a minor detail that. You know, five, eight minutes would go by in the movie. And that's why people, like, he even, you know, confesses at the end, like, you know, I'm sorry to those people who who joined in and they were totally lost because I'm talking about one thing, but that was ten minutes ago and I just get so worked up into it. Um, I thought that was really great. It was great. And I I have to rewatch Man of Steel now because I'm just so excited. It's such a good movie. It really is. It didn't get the due it deserved when it came out. Yeah. For whatever for whatever reason, I feel like all of these DC movies have kind of got. I mean, let's say Marvel, uh, Man of Steel, and BBS definitely didn't get their due no. when they were in theaters. All right, and so now they're. Uh, you know, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why it didn't get their due. It did. Tell it's me. due. Iron Man three, Thor two, and the Wolverine came out that year. You know what though? But you t- you tell me those three. The the Wolverine is probably the only good one. And now talking about D- you know DC excluded, right? But at the time, like, Man, everybody's rock right. hard to see those movies. You, you're absolutely right because I like Thor one. Proven franchise, Thor proven franchises. Yeah, totally know? right. Yeah, I like the first Thor movie, and so if you're excited for another Thor movie, yeah, you know you're absolutely right. That, that's very true. And also, to be honest. Superman movies don't have the best track record. No. You, oh. you and I went to go see Superman Returns. Only movie I've ever fallen asleep in. Only movie theater I've ever fallen asleep in. That movie was we, not I don't good. know why we didn't just leave. We were literally laying across the seats sleeping. And we all got why in trouble. We, just leave? we all got in trouble yeah. for seats. Yeah, we saw like a like, 10 o'clock yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that was terrible. It was awful. That, that one was awful. But this is great. It's a redemption story for Superman movies. Definitely. Uh, all right. So... At the end of the Q&A, he brings on Henry Cavill, which was very unexpected. I didn't, I honestly didn't see that coming. No. Didn't see it coming at all. No. Brings him on. That was fucking cool. They talked for a little bit. They asked, you know, I was talking before about, you know, him trying on the suit for the first time, blah, blah. And then Zack Snyder pauses and he says, and we have some other people we want to bring on the call. And my heart nearly leapt out of my throat. I know. Because I was like, it's gonna be all the, it's gonna be all where's the Justice ben? members. Where's it's ben? gonna be, it's yeah, where's Ben? I was like, oh my god, I fucking was freaking out, and it ended up being just a bunch of people that were asking questions, and some of them didn't even ask questions. Some of them they didn't get called upon, no. or whatever. They were just fans. I saw a lot of them wearing the Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder's Justice League shirts, right? The shirts that, that those people have been, they've been selling them on. Uh, imagine being shirts. the girl, like, because obviously all those those questions were pre-approved. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but like the girl that actually got to ask. Imagine being that I girl. I assume that she was I, – I I took it as she already – like they knew she was going to ask that question and they called upon her last when they were going to wrap it up. Right. 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 Yeah. They oh must my god! And so she comes out, and she's like, "And then he's again. You? He's be like, he's he's tiptoeing around it. I don't I know. Thought we were this and that. We thought like we thought we were gonna get our hearts ripped out again. So she asks. She goes. Um, she goes. When are you right? When are you gonna release the Snyder cut? Yep. And he stops. He pauses. And I'm like, this is it. He's gonna announce it. He's gonna announce it. And then he comes up. He starts talking. He's like, "Well, you know, like I've said before, it's not really in my hands. This, this, and that." Yep. And then Henry Cavill starts talking about how how much Man of Steel meant to him and how much playing Superman meant to him. And I'm like, "This all sounds like they're all like basically going to say it's never happening." Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, they he stops and he goes, "Yeah, I can't really show you guys anything well, right no, now, Henry but I, I can." Says sh- something. He goes, "Just release it." Just, just show it. Oh, I, was like, yes, I can't do yes. that, but like I can, I can, I, I can't just show it, but I can show you this. And yeah. It's, oh my God. He flips the camera around and boom, Zack Snyder's Justice League, HBO Max, twenty twenty one. We That's did gonna it. Feel, uh, we did it. It's gonna feel so good for Zack Snyder's for him to see Zack Snyder's Justice League because. He obviously, when he was making Justice League, his family went through a horrific tragedy. Mm-hmm. And that's why he had to step away from it. We talked about it in the last episode. For him now to come back to this movie, whether or not he thought that it the cut that went to theaters sucked or whatever. He's never seen that, it. He said he's never he, seen it. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, he, so now he gets his hands back and for him to see his name Zack Snyder's Justice League Mm -hmm. and I mean he's he obviously appreciates all the support that the fans have been giving but this is it it's here Mm -hmm. HBO Max 2021 I can't get I can't get it soon enough I can't get it soon and all you fans out there listening get your asses like this is a huge win for us this is a monster W huge but huge if we go out there and the support keeps going and like we just pour a ton of fucking money into HBO Max and like they make they make money ass over tea kettle like they can't help but do more. We could they get it back. To. We could they get it to. all back. Like like in in Endgame, we can bring them all back. We can do we can it. Bring them all back. I am I am signing up for HBO Max day 1. Just because I I was telling you earlier, I just want to support the the platform because mm-hmm. right now it's right now it's $3 off so everybody knows. Usually it's 14, right now it's 11. Um, for, for a year. So, I want to support the platform because they they took the leap to support Zack Snyder yep. and the Justice League and the Snyder Cut. They actually listened. This is what comp large companies are missing. They're not listening to the people. Right. The, the perfect that day, platform to do it too. HBO, yeah. the perfect platform yes. to do it. Yep. yep. Uh, sorry, Matt. Go Absolutely. ahead. You were you were you were no, no, you but, were something but, there. That day, the day this the the it was the anniversary is in November. The anniversary of the the day the movie released, they there was this social media blitz where everybody was tweeting about it. If you are Warner Brothers, and I was getting worried for a minute, if you're Warner Brothers and you don't try to make a play to sell this to somebody or make it yourself, what the what fuck are you doing? Are you, you don't want to make any money, you, like right. What are you doing? You got to listen to your people. These people are, I mean, and this is not just someone on Twitter being like, yeah, I'd like to see the Snyder cut. This is people buying shirts to support Donate, a, a, donating a movie to that charities. doesn't exist. It doesn't like, exist. Donating to charities to, for a cut of a movie that doesn't yet exist. Also, you know what? Take a page out of Disney's book. Disney, they're, they're redo all the animated movies that were their huge hits. You know what they're doing? They're making them again. And everybody's yeah. paying twice as much to see him again in theaters. <laughs> so you've got X amount of this movie filmed. You took a you took a loss on the original Justice League. You took a loss on it, but you still made some money. Reuse some of that footage, put a little more money into it, and show the fucking movie again. Yeah, use it. Do it again. People right? How many it. times did James Cameron release Titanic in theaters? A thousand. Oh yeah, a thousand. Just keep making. Yeah. People are gonna keep seeing it. Keep doing it. I mean, Avatar. They did the same thing with Avatar. And you know what? Come and see I it. was thinking about this hard after we we got off the phone earlier because people talk about like setting a precedent, like oh, you know, people are gonna you can't just give in to fans all the time and this and that. First of all, that's like I thought about it, like that's bullshit, and it's on different levels. Like there is a there was a huge outpouring for Deadpool. There was a an even bigger outpouring. For Zack Snyder's Justice League, but like nobody's really 
that psyched to see like the air cut of Suicide Squad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it doesn't even though I see some people turning to that now and I'm like, come on guys. Like, no. let, let's celebrate this victory first. <laughs> right. But, There's already another Suicide Squad made. Let's not let's you know let's or, it's being it, released. It, here's here's a good one. Like it's a similar situation. The Josh Trank cut of his Fantastic Four movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nobody's really coming in their pants to see that. But no. like everybody's dying to see Zack Snyder's vision because Batman vs Superman, even though it wasn't like critically received, it made a fuckload of money. It made so yeah. much money. Like the fans was it's are undeniable, still right? Yes, yes. It's just crazy. And for people to say you you shouldn't give in to the fans, like what kind of business person are you if you're gonna leave money on the table like that? Right? Who's you know, paying like, your like, bills? Shove it. Who's paying your thirty million? You know, your three hundred million dollar budget. It's if, the fans. If the people want it, why aren't you making it? That's low hanging fruit. Fucking put it out right. and let these people eat it up. I, I don't know, but I'm, it's coming. I mean, that's it. There's no argument I know. about it. It's We're coming. here. Twenty twenty one. So we HBO take, Max. We've done it. You know what we do, everybody? We take this W. We celebrate. Yes. We celebrate on a long, beautiful Memorial Day weekend. Yes. And you know what? We just we wait patiently until it comes out. That's it. Because, That's all we do. That's because all we can the, do. You know, in in the famous words of Lex Luthor, the bell cannot be unrung. That's right. The bell cannot be unrung. That's right. And you know what else we do too? We 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 start we start pouring juice back into the Ben Affleck fan club. Oh my god! I, it I, never I, went away. I already I but already now. texted Tim Madden. We're we're back, baby. We did it. The Ben <laughs> Affleck fan club. We are back. <laughs> Oh, in a lot of ways, we never left, but for especially for him being Batman, I'm so excited to see him be Batman again. On the I screen. know, oh, I know, and that's, especially now, like, uh, I'm speculating wildly, but like, he, he, I get for some reason, I get like an uncomfortable amount of, you know, news updates about Ben Affleck and his personal life on my phone. <laughs> I don't know why it must be like cookies, and I, you know, I searched him so much when you know he was he was Batman, but like. Oh, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner take their kids to church on Sunday and get ice cream afterwards. I get those. <laughs> like that's how deep I get. But now, like he's who's better than Ben Affleck? Like he's he's it oh. seems like he's you know, doing better with his alcoholism. He's back in shape again and he's laying the wood to Anya de Armas. So oh like Oh my god. Who's what a life he leads. What a life. What a life he and leads. Also, Ben Affleck also has a great relationship with HBO. Just saying. He sure does. He sure does. I just watched his movie, The Town, on HBO the oh, other day. Amazing movie. Speaking of which, Great movie. you know, the t- I meant to mention this on the podcast yesterday. He's got like a four-hour cut of The Town. Does he really? Yeah, he's got a four-hour version of The Town. I'm, I'm going to put this out to all directors, even though you're definitely not listening. If you have a longer cut of your movie, figure a way to get just it out. Just put it out fans of your Fans of your movie are going to want to see it. And if the, if people don't want to see it, then they don't want to see it. But it's out there. Don't let that shit rot. Right. Like, that's terrible. Put, we want us. We want to see what you got. Put it on a DVD. Give it a limited release and charge yeah. charge a shitload of money for it. Pr- um, Prince. So it's a similar story, but Prince has like, I mean, they was they estimated like probably a dozen albums worth of music that's what? unreleased. Yeah, it, it, and I don't know if they started releasing yet, but I remember I was like listening to a podcast where the manager was talking. Her, his manager was talking about it, where he would just he had every room in his house was set to record. So if he had inspiration, he would start recording. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so he has all this shit, but it's like you can't let that shit like like if Prince died and then no one knew about this stuff, it's fucking gone forever. Get your art out there. We want to see it. Your fans will want to eat it up. Right. And so, as two loyal fans, Matt and I have decided, uh, we have decided to go on a trailer freeze for Zack Snyder's Justice League. When trailers and images and news starts coming out, we are muting that shit on all of our social media outlets. Uh, We will still be excited about it. We'll know it's happening, but we will not be doing deep dives, frame by frame analysis of trailers. I want to be surprised. And I talked about this with Matt earlier. One of our friends, uh, you know, someone he knows, does that, and he's been doing it for a long time. And <clears throat> something that you know, one specific instance he mentions is that he went on a he he had before he went and saw Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace, which you know, 
is not everyone's favorite Star Wars movies. He he knew nothing about it. He knew nothing about Darth Maul. He didn't know that Darth Maul had you know the the dual lightsaber. I'm sure there's a better so term cool. for it. So like, That's imagine so cool. being in theaters and being so fucking surprised seeing that happening for the first time. Imagine seeing Alien in theaters for the first time and seeing that thing come out of its chest without knowing it's going to happen. I oh, want man. that. Feeling. I mean, the actors didn't. The actors didn't even know in that scene that it was going to happen. Exactly. Um, I want that uh, feeling. It, and you know what, too? Like, we don't. We don't. We're not set to gain anything by watching the trailers because we know what the movie generally is about. We know it's going to be different. But anything they show in the trailer that we haven't already seen is going to be Snyder cut footage. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck would we want to spoil Snyder cut footage? You know what I mean? Like, why would we want to spoil that? We know they're going after Steppenwolf. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we know that. Yeah. Like, why would we want to get spoiled we, with we, all this fresh we know new footage? Dark Side will be in it in some capacity. Yeah, we, we don't want to get spoiled. And, you know, one last thing, too. 2021, like, it's lining up for to come out it's in the year. midst of all the other DC movies. Like, we've got The Suicide Squad coming out. We've got Wonder Woman 84 coming out. The Flash is in production. The new Did Batman Woman is in production. Did delayed again? I'm sorry? Did I miss that? Did Wonder Woman get pushed next year? Oh, I don't know. No, but, I mean, it's coming out this year. But, like, it's, yeah, right, right, there's, right. like, we're on the precipice of a... Of an outpouring yeah. of DCEU movies. And this yep. is going to be, could be the momentum right in there. Momentum, baby. Keep chugging along. And we were talking about earlier where, you know, whereas Marvel needs to be on Disney Plus, you know, for the most part. Mm-hmm. DC has their shit everywhere. It's the CW. They have their own streaming app. They have, uh, where else were you we saying? There was a few other places where they had all their shit, you know. And so, like, it can be everywhere. Who knows what can, what can happen for HBO now? Mm-hmm. We're talking TV shows, other mo- spin-off movies. Maybe Joe Maganello wants to be Deathstroke in a series. We were talking about a series earlier. That'd be fucking cool. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, that's that's what we had to talk about. We fu- the you know TLDR too long didn't read. We <laughs> fucking did it. We fucking did it. I'm so proud of us. Oh, I'm so proud. I was. I mean, today was. I was jumping for joy. Me too. And literally I, jumping for joy, screaming. I gave the and, old Tiger Woods fist pump. <laughs> <laughs> and like I couldn't remember being this happy about something like this. Like like the I don't remember the last time. Like maybe like when I saw Endgame. Mm-hmm. Like that was the last time for a movie like this. I'm just so excited. And I'm so happy for Zack Snyder. And I'm so happy for the fans that were getting it. Don't listen to the naysayers. Yep. Just, just be enjoy, happy. Enjoy what and just like what you like, man. So that's it for this little shorty. It ended up turning into a quite a quite an episode, forty five minutes. And if we're but, being uh, if that, we're being honest, like we could have talked about this for four hours. So oh, definitely, uh, for sure, absolutely. We could we could have speculated till the till the fucking moon comes cr- comes crushing down onto Earth. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a win, it's everybody. Good. Take this one, take this one home, put it under your pillow, and and oh. hold tight for two thousand twenty one. I hope I don't wake up. Get the freeze chamber. Thing. Get the fucking yeah. Get me the fucking freeze chamber. Is right. God damn it. Put me in the phantom zone until this movie comes out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thank we'll talk you. To you soon. See ya.